This is a presentation which reviews the article on glucagon receptor knockout prevents insulin deficient type 1 diabetes in mice. The study was carried out to assess the role of the hyperglucagonemia of total insulin deficiency in the lethal catabolic consequences of the disease and to determine if the beneficial effects of glucagon blockade are sufficient and safe enough to qualify as a potential therapeutic target in human type 1 diabetes. The idea was first proposed when somatostatin, which was the first glucagon suppressing agent to be discovered, was found to stop the acute metabolic consequences of the complete lack of insulin. The scientists wanted to bring forward an unquestionable proof that glucagon action by itself causes the lethal consequences of insulin deficiency. The experiment involved inducing insulin deficiency in glucagon receptor null mice. They were treated with streptozotocin, STZ, which is a naturally occurring chemical that is toxic to the insulin-producing beta cells of the pancreas in mammals. However, because glucagon receptor null mice were resistant to STZ-induced beta cell destruction, it was essential to give a double dose of STZ instead. For comparison, wild-type mice were used. To justify that doubling the dose of STZ was significant for the resistant glucagon receptor null mice, they measured the levels of plasma insulin and pre-proinsulin in both non-diabetic and STZ diabetic mice using immunostaining, which is a method to detect a specific protein in a sample. From the table, you can see that the beta cell area and plasma insulin has significantly reduced in both non-diabetic and STZ diabetic mice. This shows that STZ is an effective chemical to destroy beta cells, even in resistant glucagon receptor null mice. This made it possible to determine the role of diabetic hyperglucagonemia on the phenotype of complete insulin deficiency. The experiment involved doing a western blot, also known as protein immunoblotting. This was done to determine the complete inactivation of glucagon in the resistant glucagon receptor null mice. They compared the hepatic levels of PCREP, which is a key protein in its signal transduction pathway, with those of wild-type controls. The hepatic PCREP should be increased if there is a functionally intact glucagon receptor present in the liver. However, PCREP was not indicated in the livers of resistant glucagon receptor null mice that has been treated with STZ. To carry out western blotting, livers of mice were lysed in radioimmunoprecipitation, RAPA buffer. To resolve the proteins, sulfate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis SDSPAGE were used. A nitrocellulose gel membrane containing the proteins is sandwiched between positive and negative electrodes. Electric field is applied through the energy supply and proteins that are coded with negatively charged SDS move towards the positive electrode and out the gel into the membrane. Nitrocellulose binds any proteins it comes into contact with. Membranes were incubated with enzyme-linked secondary antibodies. In this case, goat anti-rabbit or anti-mouse horseradish peroxidase conjugated immunoglobulin G for one hour. The proteins were detected by using enhanced chemiluminescence detection system. The results were reported as a standard error of the mean, SEM. Statistical analysis of the data was performed with student t-test. Standard error of means allows you to predict how much variation there will be between the means of different samples or different populations with normally distributed data. Polymerase chain reaction, PCR, was used to amplify the extracted RNA from trizzle isolation. All PCR reactions 
were performed in triplicates. Triplicates were done to make sure that the results were as accurate as possible. The mean for the results would be more accurate than if the results were only repeated once. Assaying the sample in triplicate is another control. If you do not get the same result in all triplicate wells, there is an issue with the experimental technique or there could be a pipetting error. In a clinical laboratory, the experiment would have to be repeated. The mRNA level was calculated by using standard curve method. To conclude, the researchers deduced that blocking glucagon action prevents the deadly metabolic and clinical derangements of type 1 diabetic mice. Destroying beta cells resulted in hyperglucagonemia, which is a production of excess glucagon, caused severe hyperglycemia, ketosis and cachexia, which is a loss of weight, fatigue and muscle atrophy. Wild type mice developed all these ailments, whereas the glucagon receptor null mice were at a normal state of health even after the high dose of STZ and there was no clinical evidence of insulin deficiency. This shows that in the absence of glucagon action, insulin deficiency in mice is a silent disorder. To make sure this experiment was fair, the scientists compared various glucoregulatory parameters such as the measurement of insulin growth factor, IGF-1 levels in both mice, comparison of free fatty acids and ketones, phosphoenyl pyruvate carboxykinase mRNA and lactate levels and amino acid levels. The, this experiment has given a potential to develop treatment of insulin deficiency in humans using glucagon suppression. Additional comments noted throughout reviewing the article were as follows. Only six mice were used in both groups of mice, which isn't representative of the whole population. Therefore, to improve their reliability, a larger sample size should have been used. This concludes our review on the chosen article. Thank you for listening.